Hi, I'm Dave. I'm a tour guide here at the Titan Missile Museum. I served in the Air Force on a Titan missile crew down here in the mid-70s. I'm going to point out a couple things that are up topside when you come to visit us so you'll know what they are. The first thing is a silver pole with the scoop on it. That's our security system. That's all the security we have here. There are no cameras up topside. There are no security forces up, up here. It's a Doppler radar, sends out a little radio beam. You break that beam, we get an alarm downstairs. There's two of them guarding our air conditioner. Well, the air conditioner wasn't here back in the day. Uh, that was our air shaft. That was our escape hatch. Uh, it's just an open grate and a 50-foot air shaft there. Over here, that's called the Slivix. It's a super low frequency antenna. It's buried in the ground. It gets its signals through the ground instead of the air. Sort of like a submarine here is underwater. Uh, you're definitely going to get that signal, but because it's coming through the ground, it takes a long time to get it. And it gives you a hard copy readout of the message. The nose cone over there looks like a missile popping out of the ground. That's an ultra high frequency antenna. Uh, semi-survivable. That's going to talk to Looking Glass, the doomsday plane. That plane is going to spool out five miles of wire behind it as it flies across the western United States, uh, broadcasting out all the launch codes to, out to all the missile silos. The white antenna that's sitting on that oil derrick, that's our main communication. That's not going to survive a nearby attack. So the white pole in front of it sits in its own 70-foot deep hardened silo with 10-foot thick concrete walls. That's its backup. That has another backup just like it, still in the ground with the cover on it. All right, this is the silo closure door. 760 tons, three and a half inch thick steel filled with concrete. It sits over the top, protects that missile from a nearby detonation. It has to rise up on these railroad tracks and slide open in under 19 seconds flat. A nuclear detonation, the size of the bombs that the Soviet Union had, landing anywhere 14,000 feet above us in this valley is going to destroy everything from that mountain 12 miles away to this other mountain 30 miles away. Everything is going to be completely destroyed. The only thing left standing will be this door. All right, in order to become a museum, we made a deal with the Soviet Union. They also have a museum. It's in the Ukraine. It's a comparable silo and a comparable missile. But they didn't put their missile back in the silo where it belongs. They just laid it outside on the ground. That's why this is the only place on Earth you can see a liquid fuel rocket back in a silo where it belongs. Now, in order to become a museum, we open the silo closure door halfway. We put those big blocks on the railroad tracks it rides on so the Soviets could see that it can't open any further. We put this big glass dome over the open half of the silo and we cut a hole in the reentry vehicle. So when the Soviet and now the Russian satellites fly overhead, they can peer through this window into that hole in the reentry vehicle and make sure America hasn't gone and put a new nuclear weapon in here and made this operational. When you come down for a visit, this is going to be your best view of the Titan II missile. You're going to be able to see all 103 feet of the Titan II, all the way down to the big silver donut called the thrust mount that the missile is bolted to. All right, we took the engines off the missile. We put them outside under the shed so everybody can see the technology it took to launch this thing. Now, if you just look through the dome and saw the size of this, how incredibly large this is, you would think these engines would be huge to be able to launch this into space. The Titan II is going 800 miles high over the North Pole, three times higher than the space station flies. These are the engines that are going to send it there. Now, these are the first stage engines. 430,000 pounds of thrust. It's going to burn for two and a half minutes. It's going to get this rocket 50 miles into the sky and 50 miles north. After that, the second stage engine kicks on. That has 100,000 pounds of thrust. That's going to get this rocket 200 miles high and about 400 miles north. After that, the reentry vehicle separates. Just that small vernier engine there is going to situate that into the right position so it hits its right coordinate. From that point on, 
there's no more thrust, there's no more guidance. The reentry vehicle is on its own trajectory. That's why they call it an intercontinental ballistic missile. It's a ballistic flight. That reentry vehicle is going to fly another 600 miles high to hit its highest point in the sky at 800 miles, and then it's going to start falling. And it's going to fall up to 6,500 miles away and hopefully land on its target. The Titan II missile, we bought the 54 that went in the silo, the 51 that we tested, NASA always also bought some of them. They bought 12 of these, but they renamed it. They called it Gemini, the Gemini Space Program. The Titan II missile was the launch vehicle for the Gemini Space Program. Uh, everybody heard of Neil Armstrong, the first man to walk on the moon. His first ride into space was on a Titan II missile named Gemini 8.